it's Tom from PC Gamer here at PAX West with Keith and Eric from Counterplay Games working on Duelist. How are you guys doing? Awesome. We're having a great time here. Amazing. I love it. So, for those who don't know, first just give me a little bit of an overview of what Duelist is. So, Duelist is a collectible tactics game. You assemble an army of over 500 cards that you can then build, and it's a head to head game. And it's uh, available right now on Steam and it's PC and Mac. It's free to play and uh, you can uh, collect them all and battle them out. Cool. And so you mentioned Steam. The game has been out for a number of months now, but you guys just launched on Steam uh, just really, really recently. So how's that gone? How's the reaction been? Have you guys seen a, an influx of players or anything like that? We've seen a very large number of players. We just released uh, on Steam last week. And right now we're the top five trending in, on Steam, which has been very, very cool. And uh, the number of new players, it's, it's been great because this is a perfect opportunity for, for new folks to come in and uh, enjoy the game. And our, our numbers have grown a lot. That's great to hear. And on top of that, it's been a very busy week for you guys as you also just released your first major expansion for Duelist, Denizens of Shimzar. How has the reaction around that been? Uh, I think it's been pretty positive. I mean, first stage of a new expansion, everything just blew wide open. Everything you thought you knew about Duelist has changed. So right now everybody's experimenting with new decks, new strategies, and the, like, we're, even then we're still at the very first layer of the onion. So like, there's, uh, it's my favorite time at collectible card games, right? It's the, uh, it's it's all wonderment and uh, discovery. So we'll uh, we'll have to see what happens when things get really competitive. You're expecting, I, I assume, things to you know shake out a little bit more in the coming weeks. But have you guys noticed anything right off the bat that you can identify as, as something you're you're either really happy people are doing or kind of nervous about? You know, you weren't really expecting something to be so powerful or anything like that. Uh, well, I mean, we're we're always nervous when we release new stuff for the game, right? I mean, uh, it's counterplay is a bunch of us in a room play testing games and. Uh, I mean, we've been doing this a long time, but we can't. We don't know everything, uh, so yes, we're of course we're nervous. But uh, so far, it seems that the the what I call the discovery curve that we've been designing for the decks that we predicted people would be attracted to to start with, it's kind of been playing out like we expected. Uh, I mean, it's only been out a week, so I'll, you have to ask me again in two weeks how that goes. But um, so far, I think uh, I've been playing on ladder a lot. I've actually been skipping a uh, chunk of the convention so I could just go back and play on the ladder. Um, the level of fun, like just pure fun when people are experimenting with decks is actually higher than I, th than I expected. Uh, probably because we've been playtesting for so long, but playtesting is not fun. <laughs> uh, but the play is really fun and it's, the games are explosive and they're fast. And it reminds me of when we first launched the game way, way back when. And every, again, everything was wide open and people were just experimenting and playing and we're getting all these crazy plays. Part of that is these new units that you've introduced called Battle Pets, which you don't actually have direct control over. That was, when I heard about that, I, I thought it was kind of a risky thing to add to the game. Have you, has it performed kind of better or worse at all than you were hoping for, these Battle Pets? I'm not sure we can tell yet. I mean, you're right, it's risky, of course. Um, Part of our mission statement is that we want to push the envelope all the time. We want to we want to experiment with things that haven't been done before, and most of my experience has been with playtesting. And our number one goal is that it's fun, both fun to watch and fun to play. And the new sense of unpredictability that they bring to the game is uh, is cool. And and we want to let people discover how their how the AI works on on their own. Uh, so far, I mean, of course, there's a lot of chatter about it. Um, the uh, the only thing that surprised me a little bit is the reaction to the uh, to the range pets. We wanted to make sure that it was very, all the battle pets act exactly uniform, so that once you've discovered how one of them acts, you know how everything acts. Uh, so there's been a little blowback on uh, some of the range pets, but uh, it's I mean, new set, so we have to see what happens as uh, as it matures and see if people experience with it plays out the way that it when we were play testing. Actually, on that. You guys took a, a interesting tactic in the lead up to Denizens of Shimzar where there were a lot of little mechanics that you didn't actually tell anyone that they would do until they were in the hands of people. One of those examples is uh, the Soulborn to uh, Obelisk with, in Nimbus and then the battle pets, just even how they moved, we didn't know really until we had them in hand. Why did you guys decide to do that? Why did you leave it a little bit cryptic? 
Well, okay, I'm an old school uh, CCG player, right? Uh, I've been playing Magic the Gathering since 1993 when it first came out. And one of the things the internet has done is it's kind of demystified uh, collectible card games at all. But one of the core value propositions of collectible card games is that you're consistently getting new doses of the unknown, right? It's like Christmas. You get a whole bunch of cool new stuff and you got to discover how it works. Um, so from a design point of view, we thought it would be kind of cool to bring some of that discoverability back into the game. Let people actually genuinely be surprised for as long as the internet will be surprised for. But, but bring some of that adrenaline rush of surprise back into the game. Yeah, it's also a way to allow players that are opening their orbs for the first time to kick off and feel like they're kicking off a new discussion on the same day as everyone else rather than people having a little bit of a head start knowing about some of the units. It's just like this fun surprise on day one to see what, how these uh, react. And so I know this is a, a pressing question to ask because your expansion just came out this week, but what's next? Are you guys already looking ahead at another expansion? What does this tell us about the pace at which Duelist is going to get expansions as well? Our goal is to release a new expansion every three to four months. And the card size would range anywhere between 40 to 90 cards. So it's very aggressive, but we really feel that our game is a living game and that we're willing to push the boundaries really hard. But we also want to make sure that there's enough content for our players to continually innovate on their decks. Cool. Well, thanks very much for talking with us, guys. And stay tuned at PCGamer.com for more from PAX West. Victory.